What's your name? Where are you from? And why are you here today? Okay, Marcus Keller. I'm from San Joaquin Valley. Uh, basically, I'm here. Uh, I sell street seats uh, uh, to more or less uh, overcome the day labor that I use. That I that I get not too much day labor happens nowadays. So I sell street seats to make ends meet. And what is street sheet? Street sheet is a paper uh, totally written by the homeless population. Um, it gives us a voice. We get to share our opinions of basically what we see going on from the street level point of view rather than what the government tells people that's happening and, and uh, what people see all the craziness on the streets and let people know not all homeless people are drunks, crazies, dangerous. Some of it's just uh, going through our ups and downs and trying to uh, better ourselves. Well, you know, uh, on behalf of government and, and the war on poverty, I have to ask, do you, do you have a permit to sell those newspapers, sir? Yes. You do? Yes. Wait, I, I was joking. You actually, they actually require you to have a permit to sell newspapers? Yes. Yes, they do. How much does government hate poor people? Um, I wouldn't say that they hate poor people, but it's basically uh, the poorer you are, the more hoops and red tape that you have to go through. And they make it a little bit harder for, for people who uh, aren't of a certain... Uh, income level or or status level you might say yeah they do purposely make it a little bit harder yes wow no, see i was i really was joking i, I assumed that I even in san francisco you'd be allowed to just stand on a street corner and sell yeah. newspapers for homeless people that, this i mean that's i i, I hesitate to word use the, the, the so cliche words but that's literally insane because you know i mean you know what that means that if, if you didn't have a permit right. and you were standing here selling newspapers without a permit you, you get arrested. They give you a ticket. Yeah, they give you a ticket. They ticket a lot of the... Uh, Wait, hold on. How much is the ticket for? Uh, the tickets, I've never really gotten one. I know a guy who got one, I think it was like for 200 and something dollars. And you, so you have to, is, is that what you're wearing? You have to have an individual permit for you personally, not just for street sheet. You have to have an individual permit to be authorized to sell newspapers on the street? Basically, you have to be... You have to go through a, a class through uh, the Coalition on Homelessness and be uh, regulated to understand the do's and don'ts of uh, basically uh, being a vendor of, of street sheet, how to approach people, how not to approach people, uh, so you don't get cited for uh, what they call it. Um, oh, I forget, I forget what they call it. Loitering, disturbing the peace, any other excuse to, to bother homeless people. Basically. Yeah. So, oh man, I, I, was, I, you know, I often hesitate, mm -hmm. um, you know, going through a lot of cities, supporting homeless people who are just asking for handouts. But w when now there are a number of programs like this, and, and of course I grew up in the Bay Area, so I'm familiar with Street Sheet as, as an important tool here for the homeless yep. community. There are similar versions in different cities, and, and it's interesting. Like I mean, there are always interesting newspapers, and, and, and you t tell us about the, the material that comes into this. And, and basically, uh, what happens is that we get a chance to sit together uh, with people who you know aren't uh, living the stigma type of homelessness, and we get to talk about current events. We have good conversation. We get to learn about computer usage. We get to learn about you know Word Perfect, Excel. We uh, spreadsheets and so forth to put the paper together, which actually also enhances our our uh, viability of landing the job in today's era. See, this this puts someone like me in, a, in, in kind of a difficult situation because I I, I don't want to support people being idle. I want to I want to help people in need. Um, but but when you see someone who's you know capable of working yeah. panhandling instead, you go yeah come on that's they're just taking advantage of it when they could be working. And when I see instead people actually at least selling a newspaper, they're creating value, they're providing value to people, they're 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 you know trying to lift themselves up and and provide something that people want to consume voluntarily. So I, I hugely support that. But to think that there might be people who are not engaged in this because they can't get a license to sell newspapers on the street it is the government literally keeping people down people keeping people in that position i'm glad you've been able to at least get this one level up and at least take this initiative for yourself but you said you also had some day labor gigs you you, you work yeah. occasionally with yeah. that so but that's that's difficult for you as well right now that's difficult as well uh basically you know a day labor type of gig is you know contractors come in and they'll pay homeless people seven eight dollars an hour to you know 
uh, lug wheelbarrows and so forth to do demolition kind of stuff when the workers doing the same exact job are getting paid sixteen seventeen dollars an hour so. now you mentioned here that gentrification was was an important part of uh, the, the driving force that's challenging uh, people being able to to keep their homes here in the bay area specifically yeah. what do you think is driving that uh... basically the government is opting towards uh... uh high-paid employees that's coming in with the dot-coms and the big companies who are willing to pay, you know, thousands of dollars for what we basically pay a couple of hundred dollars a month for. Well, no, I mean, I, I can't really complain about that. If it's, if it's the government favoring them and giving them subsidies, that's a problem. But just the general development of the tech industry in the Bay Area, that, that's a good thing. And that, it, it that the people who, who have the money should be able to work and, and live yeah. live close to where they're working, right? Yeah, but, they should be able to live close to where they're working. I have no problem with that. But the thing is, is why force people out of their homes in order to make room for that, you know? There's, a, there's plenty of land that goes around, and there's all types of housing that, you know, the Tenderloin is being uh, going through a gentrification thing. The Tenderloin is basically was a low-income area of San Francisco, a big low-income area, and they're actually uh, pulling people's leases and, and uh, doing all sorts of things. So. so there would be a natural balance here, right, if people were being pushed out peacefully economically without the force part of this without without their their contracts being changed their agreements but there would also be a, a, a natural development of other housing projects even there should be there should be so isn't why, why don't we have government de developing more low-income housing or, or affordable housing for homeless well, people actually I, I'm not sure that's a good question well why don't we have why don't we have the market why don't we have more people building uh, affordable housing you know right outside the city um, that's the question everybody's asking. It's because it's 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 available to do that, but for some reason it's not just it's not being done. Well, do you think it's the same government behind this gentrification that might be limiting those opportunities, might be driving up the price of development? Of course, it's the same government. I mean, we have one government; it's the United States government, you know. But people forget that uh, people are the government, or should be. The government is for the people, by the people, and other people. And a lot of people have just. Uh, giving up their voices to, hey, my, my congressman, my, 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 my area man is going to take care of that. I'm not even going to worry about that. And they, you know, they do what they do for their own reason. So. Wait, so a government for the people, of the people, by the people, you really buy that crap? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you seem smarter than that. That's what it should be. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate your time today. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.